Hey everybody, welcome to Cooking It Real. My name is Kathy and I'm glad you could join me in my kitchen today. What we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be stuffing stuff, specifically cabbage. Here's a quick rundown of what you're gonna need to make stuffed cabbage. You're gonna need a good size head of cabbage. You're gonna need ground beef, ground chuck. You're gonna need onion, garlic, some lemon juice, tomato puree, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. We're gonna need some long grain rice. I've got a cup here, some salt and pepper, and I've got a third of a cup of brown sugar. Also have a little bit of spice to make it extra special. I have some ground cloves. I've got a little bit of cinnamon I'm going to use and a tiny bit of smoked paprika. We start by filling a large pot with water and putting it on to boil. This is how we're going to separate our cabbage leaves. Okay, let's prep our cabbage. Uh, you want to look at the outside of your cabbage and like look at this one has some kind of dark and not so nice looking leaves. We want to take that off. That will go to a worms. And let's see, this one looks kind of questionable. I'll take him off too. Everybody else looks good. Turn your cabbage so the core is facing up. And what we want to do is take a good sturdy knife and we want to cut the core out. So we want to kind of cut around, just around, be careful. Just kind of angle in, like I'm angling in as I cut around. So I'm, I'm making like a tiny cone, cone of a core. It's a cone of a core. This is probably the hardest part, you know? And you don't even have to do it this way. If you're struggling with your core, you can just take your cabbage and cut along these big uh, ribs. Okay, get those severed and your cabbage will begin to uh, be able to fall apart naturally when it gets into the boiling water. All right. Don't, don't watch, Corrine. I'm using my jewels as tools. Come on out. There you go. There, see? That was a big chunk. Might need to get a little bit more out of that. I didn't get down as good as I thought. Let's make our sauce. You want to open two, what are they, 15 ounce cans of tomato puree, or you could use crushed tomatoes. You don't want to use spaghetti sauce for this though. You just want plain tomato. Hold on to that can. All right. Our next can, so two cans of sauce. Okay, or you could use one of the taller cans. Uh, the next thing we're gonna add is our brown sugar. Here it is. I've got one third cup of light brown sugar. You could use dark brown sugar. You could use white granulated sugar. You could use uh, honey, you could use a little bit of molasses, but what we're going for here is what is called an agrodolce sauce. Agrodolce means sweet and sour. So there's the sweet, I just put it in. Where's the sour gonna come from? Let me show you. We used a third of a cup of sweet. Now we're gonna add a third of a cup of lemon juice. I'm gonna pour it into this can to help rinse out all the good tomato goodness. You want an equal amount of sweet to sour. That's my preference. Now, if you're not quite so hip on the sour, don't add as much. We're just gonna go back and forth from can to can, try to get as much of that tomato out as we possibly can. All right, and listen, I'm gonna tell you, uh, here's, here's something I want you to do. If you have some of these cans, or if you have some cans that you're gonna be using in the future, save them, okay? When they're uh, empty, clean them out, take the labels off, we're gonna have another video soon that we're gonna need these cans. Okay, I think that's good. In you go. I'm gonna save these cans and put them in the sink. And 
We're going to give this a stir. Now we're going to add our seasonings. And what I have here is I have a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of ground black pepper, a teaspoon of cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of cloves, ground cloves, and a teaspoon of smoked paprika. And everybody goes in. All right, next. And finally, I have some Worcestershire sauce, and I'm just gonna give it a few dashes. That's probably about maybe half a teaspoon, something like that. This is all to your taste, as always. You wanna have it the way you like it. And we just wanna mix this all up, and we're not gonna cook this sauce at all, okay? We're not gonna uh, simmer it or anything like this. This is just a, a raw sauce. There, that's all there is to it. Okay, our water is boiling. We're gonna take our cabbage and we're gonna put it core side down gently in the water. Be careful, don't splash yourself. All right, now we're just gonna let that come back up to a really high simmer. We're just gonna leave the burner on where it is and soon these leaves will start to uh, loosen and be ready to come off. I have a tray right beside me and I have a tongs and as each leaf comes off, we're going to put it into, onto the tray to cool. Now you might have to get a few leaves off and then get the water back to boiling so it can get further into the core. It's, it's a little bit of a time consuming process, but you really can't, you can't overcook them too much. I mean, they're, they're going to be great no matter what. There we go. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Like I'm trying to find the, the leading edge and just give it a little lift, get some water under there just to help to loosen it a little. And you'll come down to a point where the leaves are gonna be so tiny. And uh, what I do then is I just take the whole rest of the cabbage out and uh, use it for something else. Like uh, you can put it in soups, or you can just do like a cabbage fry up, you know, saute it in some butter, add some salt and pepper, nothing better for a side. There we go, come on you, come on baby. Okay, all right, I'm gonna put the lid on for another minute, get it going again. Now they're, they're so tightly wound. As you get closer to the center, they're a little more difficult to get off. But just be patient and you will be rewarded. All right, I'm almost to the point where I don't need any more leaves. Sometimes I like to double wrap if I have more leaves than filling, because to me, this is just me, my mind you, to me, the cabbage and the sauce is the best part. All right, one more leaf and that's gonna be it. Oh yeah, look at how dinky that is. Okay, we're good, we're good. All right, you, my friend, open this up wide you get to come out all of a piece just be careful there's water in that core still we're going to put this on the tray we're going to put the tray aside to let it cool 
and wait till you see what we're gonna do with this water. When my mom used to make stuffed cabbage, uh, she would put her rice into the cabbage raw. Okay, it was still dry, but I think she used minute rice and that didn't take a long time to cook at all. Some people put cooked rice into their filling. I like to do a half and half sort of thing. So I have my one cup of white rice, long grain rice, it's raw, and I'm gonna just put it in this cabbage water and I'm gonna cook it like pasta, okay? I'm gonna give it a stir. So I'm just gonna sort of parboil it just a little bit, give it a head start. I'm gonna put my timer on for eight minutes and we're just gonna let this go. When it's done, we're gonna drain it in the sink and add the rice to our meat mixture. Okay, we're gonna give this a quick rinse in cool water. We'll get it cooling, stop the cooking. Gonna let this cool and then we're gonna add it to our meat mixture for our filling I have a pound of ground chuck to that I'm going to add about half of that large onion I showed you before chopped and this is about four cloves of garlic chopped now you can absolutely adjust both of these things to your taste All right everybody in 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 good 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 and now we have some more seasoning and it's kind of like uh, what we did for the sauce with a couple of little extras. Get this off my... Here I have a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of ground black pepper, a teaspoon of smoked paprika, one teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of clove, ground clove. And this is the difference. I got a teaspoon of garlic granulated garlic and a teaspoon of gran granulated onion. And everybody goes in to the pool. Of course, this is another thing that you can customize to your taste. Next comes our par cooked rice that has been drained and uh, rinsed in cool water to cool it off a little bit. Let me get this, get as much of this as I can. All right, now we just mix it up. I like to use a glove so I can do it with my hands before I had such beautiful fingernails I would do it just with my bare hands it doesn't bother me a bit um, but for those of you who get a little squeamish about touching raw meat get some gloves invest in a little box of gloves you can get them at Walmart they're uh, great to have on hand okay just reach right in start giving it like a a mush and a squeeze and get everything all mixed in. Make as big of a mess as you can and everybody will be happy. Now I don't I know I have like just a small amount of ground beef and the ratio of meat to rice is a personal choice. So you do you, okay? And uh you don't even have you could use um Instead of ground beef, you could use ground pork. You could use a mixture of beef and pork. I've done that before. You could use ground lamb. Oh, that would make it truly, truly amazing. All right, we're getting this mixed up. That's looking pretty good. A lot of people will also add an egg to this. I do not. I, I'm not sure why they add an egg. I don't think you need it. I think it's just fine without it. And uh, like I said, you do you. All right, we're good. Ooh, that's good. All right. Yes. All right, now we're going to get our cooled off cabbage leaves and get ready to stop them. Yeah. Once you're ready to start with your cabbage leaves, you want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Now, you see this beautiful leaf? It still has the, the thick stem. This has got to go, all right? This is gonna be very difficult to roll if you leave that stem in there. So just like we made a little cone with our 
full head of cabbage, I just cut a little triangle out. That's how I cut that out. All right, so you can like get a few of them done ahead of time if you want. And then you can just start rolling, 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 rolling. You know, some people call it cabbage rolls, uh, stuffed cabbage, um, cap uh, gal gal oh, here we go. Gal galumkis, galumka, galumkai, something like that. Oh my gosh. I think that's Polish. I am not sure <laughs> if it is. And if it's not, I apologize for butchering that. All right, let's see. I'm going to do like four good size ones to start. I also, besides preheating my oven to 350, I have got a 9 by 13 baking pan here. You can use all kinds of different things so long as they're oven safe. A casserole dish, a baking pan, a bread pan, you name it, whatever you want. All right, I'm going to take a spoon here. I'm going to take about, you want to sort of match the amount of stuffing to the size of your leaf. Now, I don't mind touching this with my fingers a little bit. No worries. Okay, so now you put that there and you want to fold in a one like this and a one like that. And you want to tuck and you want to roll. And now you've made your first roll. So take some of your sauce, put a little bit in the bottom of your baking pan or whatever vessel you're using. Spread it around a little bit. Oh, that's my oven. It's preheated. Some people um, like to put some of the sauce into the uh, filling. And I've done that before too, but uh, I think that's to get some of the um, spices in there. And uh, But I'm, I put the spices in the meat, so I'm good. Now, what you want to do is you want to take the folded side down. You want to just tuck it right in there. Easy peasy. And we're just going to get these guys lined up and get them filled up. And then we'll be ready to rock and roll. Got a little bit of filling left over. I'm just going to turn it into a meatball. You know, this stuffing filling uh, is great for stuffing all kinds of things. If you like stuffed peppers, uh, this makes a great filling for stuffed peppers, and the sauce goes excellent with stuffed peppers as well. All right. Now let's get some sauce on top of this and get it into the oven. Okay, we have a little bit of sauce on the bottom. We're going to put some sauce in the top, but I also want to, I don't want to put too much sauce on the top because I want to have some left over so I can serve it with sauce. Or, uh, you know, when I, this, this stuff is one of those dishes that tastes better the next day and the day after that and the day after that. And so I um, like to have a little bit of extra sauce on hand so when I reheat, I can re-sauce. Get some on that meatball. There you go, meatball. All right. And then, you know, you can always add a little bit more. This is uh, going to get covered, and it's going to go in the 350-degree oven, and it does take a while, okay? This is going to be cooking for about an hour to an hour and a half. Uh, I would plan on an hour and a half just to be on the safe side. So I'm going to cover with foil. We're going to check it after one hour. 
uh, take off the foil, maybe add a little bit more sauce, maybe not. And uh, then we're going to cook it the rest of the way. All right, into the oven. This is going to be good. Oh, this is going to be good. Ud, ud. You know, I think some of the most important flavors, uh, aside from the sweet and sour, which is my one, two, okay? Uh, the agro, which is the sour, and the dolce, which is the sweet. Agro dolce. But I think that little bit of ground cloves adds so much to this. So, so much. Mm. Mm. I'm going to let this go just a little while longer, and then I'll bring in my special guest, and we will taste it together and let you know how it is. Now, if you've enjoyed so far this recipe, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps other people to find my channel. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Look at this delicious goodness. All right, I got two plates here. I'm going to dish up a roll for me and one for my special guest. And we're going to let them cool for a little bit because, I mean, they are coming straight out of the oven and they are hot, hot, hot. All right, that's a one. And there's a two. This is going to be my supper. Oh, boy. All right, we're going to let those cool. And we'll be back in just a couple. All right, I got my special guest. Hello. It's Stephanie. Hello, hello, hello. All right. And she's come to taste this stuffed cat. That's right. A family favorite. Yes, for a very long time. All right. So we're going to cut our cabbage and we're going to taste it right in front of you live. All right. Oh, my gosh. I get, look, at here's your fork. Oh, yeah. You, you get small the little fork. fork. That's yeah. right. I like a small fork. I know. I got a big mouth, but I like a small <laughs> fork. <laughs> all right hang on hang on one bite okay let this cool for like what 15 know. minutes maybe that long okay here we go ready mm. Mm. oh my god what is that like christmas seasoning right on the front cinnamon and cloves holy moly mm -hmm. and it's agro dolce mm. brown sugar lemon juice sweet and sour <clears throat> Holy moly! It is good. Okay, we need another bite. Oh yeah, oh yeah, going in. And the the cabbage, it's it's like it's kind of melting. It's, it's very like melting tender. away. Yes, it's so tender. Mm. Oh my gosh, I can't even get can't even get another bite. It's too big. I want a big bite. All the all the bites are big. Ah! In the end, I actually only cooked it for an hour and twenty minutes, mm. and then we let it cool. Actually, it's a little too cool. Maybe, yeah, maybe. It, could, it could do a little hotter. But like I was telling we them. We were chatting. I know. I was telling them <laughs> earlier, though, I do, I did, you know, I do have extra sauce. I saved some sauce so that uh, when you reheat it, you can add sauce. Um, and this is like something that's good the day of, next day, next day, next day. It freezes like beautifully. Yes. And. Oh, my gosh. Absolutely delicious. Mm. Wow, even better than my childhood. Much more like a uh, mature. Yes, yes. Yeah, this yeah. is elevated. Yeah, it's that little kick of the cloves and the cinnamon that just give it something special, I think. A lot of people make it with like just Campbell's tomato soup, mm -hmm. which is I think how my mom made it, how grandma made yeah. it. Yeah. I like this so much better. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I like mine better. <laughs> what can I say? Mm. Mm. So soft. The rice mm -hmm. is like, oh man. Well, oh. you'll have to watch the video so you'll know how to make it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm going to give her a little takeaway to bring home. <laughs> and she uh, likes me best. I know. She's my favorite daughter of all time. Favorite firstborn ever. Ever. But anyway. I'm so glad that you stopped by Are you kidding me? to get all this goodness and to share it with me and them. And uh, we'll see you all next time on Cooking It Real. Bye, everybody. Bye.